Yeah, and I just mentioned him and then the guy right behind him, that 88 car of Aaron Hart Jr. But these two guys, they will not give up at the front. Just keep battling back and forth, the two and the 16. A couple of old buddies there. They've raced each other hard before. This battle for the lead will not quit. I like it. And the thing about it, they're going side by side. I think this says a lot from the, for the racetrack itself. They're not losing to Montoya in that 42 got back there in third. Kurt Busch is just, he is committed to that bottom. I mean, he's worked the car and uh, that's where he's made all of his passes. It's kind of like old school, back in the old days. That's the way you run this joint. Guy with pretty good handle on everything right now, though, is that old five car. Mark's car is really good, and it's good on the long run. It gets better as he goes along. He's by far the best Hendrick car on the long haul. Look at him drive up under Montoya there. Can't quite make the pass, but uh, getting it done. Just behind him, the 48 of Johnson has had such a good look at Keslowski's bumper. He's tired of that. Goes for the middle as you watch from Dale Jr. Krista. Dale Jr. thought his car was disconnected earlier in the weekend, but he loves this racetrack. They scuffed the wall a little bit half the hour, so the crew had to do a little extra work. But really, all of their adjustments today have been air pressure. This is Dale Jr.'s best average finishing track. Because of this concrete surface, and it actually has the seams. We saw Mark Martin describing that yesterday. You always hear the drivers say, my tires feel like basketballs. So you make more adjustments to that car through air pressure than anything else about it. It's one thing, again, I just, I know I keep saying I drove, I've driven the track, but the bottom right down there where Kurt Busch is running is real chattery, pop, 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 just like you'd expect concrete to be. And uh, that's why a lot of guys have trouble running that bottom line. At the front of the pack, Kurt Busch has pulled out a lead of half a second, Dick. Yeah, and Darrell, you've been talking about Kurt Busch liking the bottom and working on the bottom. They came to Bristol for this race with the intention of getting the car to work on the bottom. And during much of practice, that's what they were focused on. They figured if they could get the car to run at the bottom where few of others were able to run, they'd have a huge advantage. That Mark Martin working the bottom, putting those right side tires just in that black. Martin telling Alan Gustafson, keeping in mind of how this racetrack is changing, the car much tighter earlier on in this run. Thanks, Matt. Casey Kane has gone behind the wall. They have the hood up on his Budweiser Ford. And evidently, when he blew that right front tire, that he did some damage or something to some of the right front suspension. Yeah, I, I, when he went by, you know, it looked like he had a flat tire, and that's what caused that second uh, uh, time into the pit road. His tires were up when he went by here. Jeff Burton in the 31 won this race two years ago, leading a 1-2-3 finish by Richard Childress Racing, the only time that one team has occupied all the top three spots at this racetrack. Kind of figuring that people like Mark Martin and Jeff Burton uh, were just coming up on halfway. Start to talk about them along this time of the race. They understand the concept. It's 500 laps. 233 complete. Kurt Busch leading. You're watching NASCAR on Fox, presented by GoDaddy.com. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is presented by GoDaddy.com, where you can make the web your domain with a .com name for less than a buck a month. That was the front stretch in 1966. In that concrete building was NASCAR radio and public address. This was the back stretch where people sat up on the hillside. Just a few seats there. And look at the back straightaway at Bristol today. Capacity of 165,000 seats. A lot of folks uh, today perhaps scared off by the rain. Uh, that back stretch area about half full. The front stretch pretty well packed as they work their way around the Bristol Motor Speedway. Still 100,000 people or plus. As Kurt Busch leads Greg Biffle by one and a half seconds. Mark Martin, Montoya, and Jimmy Johnson, the top five. New name in the top ten, Brian Vickers in the number 83 Toyota. 
has just passed Tony Stewart to move up into 10th place. Yeah, he's been marching forward since the drop of the green flag. Started 28th. You know, Brian has never had a top 10 finish at this half mile racetrack. Had a good run at Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. Had a pickup on the Brad and Carl show. A lot's been written and said about that since those two got together twice at Atlanta. Brad's had a strong day. He's been in the top 10 most all day. But Matt, what about Carl? He's been mired back mid pack. Might do an earlier issue on a pit stop. Now, on the last run before this recent stop, he said the car was extremely tight early on. And after the stop, this was Bob Osborne's report back to Carl about the right front tire. Yeah, we're, it's going to get better and better here, but uh, just uh, take it easy till we get a good read, you know? 10 Yeah, help me out all you can, Jason. I'm doing well. It's just, man, it's so hard to pass. Yeah, just for, you know, by the time our car gets a good 50 laps in, we get a caution. Just a slight issue on that right front, but he says it wasn't blistering. It was just the material starting to move around a little bit. And Carl said the car is bad tight again already. And asking his spotter, Jason Hedleski, to give him some help up on the roof. roof. <laughs> you know, the one thing, though, I notice about Carl, Daryl, is he seems to be the only car that is determined to hug the apron all the way through both ends of the racetrack. And that's definitely harder on the right front because you're loading it up a whole lot more. This has been quite a battle for ninth place. Kozlowski and Vickers and Tony Stewart and now Jeff Gordon. It's a foursome fighting for ninth. Steve. And Mike Brian Vickers, as you said, made the great move to the front. His car is just a little snug in the center, but he likes it that way. Yeah, a, a little tug on that steering wheel is not a bad thing. You can be aggressive. When you get it pushing, that's when you're going to put that right front tire in trouble. One thing I noticed that he started doing a few laps ago when he really started moving up uh, was dominating the corner, going in, running it all the way up to the top, and then dominating the corner off. And it really helped his lap times, and he's moved up some since he started doing that. Now you see Keslowski for Martin Truex's camera. Brad has fallen to the back of that group, back to 12th place. One thing about these tires, it seems like they're pretty good for maybe 30, 40 laps, and then you've got to have the magic setup. Uh, uh oh, is that the 47? No, he's okay. Thought he was slowing down. You got to have the magic setup to go past 30 or 40 laps. And uh, Marcus Ambrose there, he got caught again too fast on entering pit road. Second time today that he's had to work himself from the back. He's up to 21st now. Uh, because of penalty. Yeah, I mean, he's going to run out of laps is going to be the problem. I mean, he's definitely used all of his mulligans up on speeding on pit road because they've got a top 10 race car. Now, the, our points leader, Kevin Harvick, in the 29 right behind him, Kevin had actually made a run up toward the top 10 or 12. Of course, Kevin started back in the 33rd position, but it's almost like the racetrack is going through a transition right now. And some people that were good, they're starting to lose it just a little bit. And unless you're thinking rains in the, you know, coming uh, here shortly or soon before the race ends, we're only halfway. We're eight laps past halfway. So whatever issues you got, get them fixed now. You'll be good at the end. Truex moving past Kozlowski. That's 12th place. Paul Menard looking in and the 39 of Ryan Newman. Menard kind of fell off the he was running really well up uh, well in the top 10 but he's sort of fallen back here lately. Top 10 in points coming into this race for the 98. And I think uh, Menard I uh, was a little dubious at the start of the season when he said he was going to run the full time nationwide and Sprint Cup schedule but it seems to have helped him. He has has really had a breakout season so far. 